Hey everyone, before we dive into this video, just have to give a quick shout out and some love to our good friends over at GuidePoint Security. GuidePoint Security is hosting yet another Capture the Flag CTF competition, and it's getting started tomorrow, Tuesday, October 12th at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, and it's running for a decent amount of time. It's running for a week, so you should have plenty of time to jump in, get your hands on some challenges, and get up on that scoreboard. The game ends Monday, October 18th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So hey, I hope to see you there. There is a link in the description. You can register online, totally free, totally accessible. You'll get an email with your confirmation and VPN access to be able to jump in the game. So I hope to see you there and enjoy the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. This video is about more challenges in the SneakCon Capture the Flag or their Fetch the Flag that they hosted alongside the SneakCon free online virtual event, October 5th to October 7th. So let's get after it. I'll hop over to my computer screen here and we'll see what we're working with. I have this challenge open in a directory called Sauerkraut because that was the name of the challenge here. I have the description that is downloaded because uh, currently the scoreboard is offline, but Sauerkraut is the name of the challenge with a given tag for Python, and the challenge prompt here says, what goes best on a hot dog, given a link that we could go ahead and work with. So I'll fire up a web browser, I guess I'll open Chrome here, and this is the service that we're greeted with that says, there is a flag here somewhere, okay, uh, I'll just hit control U, uh, excuse me, uh, control U and view the source super quick to see if they're trying to hide anything on this page. Doesn't look like it. It's just an input box with a text error that is submitted and then posted toward this page. Interesting. Okay. Um, enter some text here. Okay. I had an extra S in there. <laughs> Please subscribe. Incorrect padding. Excuse me? What do you mean? Please sub. Pl please sub. Submit. Incorrect padding. Hello? Whoa. Invalid base64 encoded string. Number of data characters 5. Cannot be more... Cannot be one more than a multiple of 4. Okay. So is it expecting base64 encoded data then? Is that why it thought <laughs> it needed padding on some of these? Like if I, if I paste this back in, is that... Invalid, invalid load key, hex A6, that's weird. Can I just like send regular data? Like if I were to echo hello into base64, I'd get that value. I'll copy it into my clipboard super quick, paste that in, <laughs> that returns a 101. Uh, what about like a simple like open and close curly braces, if it's gonna be interpreted. Here's base64 representation of it, but invalid load key on that thing. What does invalid load key mean? What causes the error pickle unpickling error? Invalid, invalid load key. Is this a Python pickle thing? Is that the joke between sauerkraut and the tag of Python? Where is the invalid? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Invalid load key. So that's got to be Python pickle that's whining about that. So is it just deserializing a Python pickle? If folks aren't familiar with a uh, Python pickle thing here, you can check out the documentation. The pickle module implements binary protocols for serializing and deserializing a Python object structure. Uh, kind of used to marshal or package up data. But there's a big red warning it says, hey, Pickle module is not secure, only unpickled data that you trust. So I'm assuming, given the error message that we saw, invalid load key, and if it's trying to unpickle something, given that error that we just read about in Stack Overflow, then it is unpickling data that we can just arbitrarily supply. Uh, so could we just get it to do things? Um, because you can you can use a Python pickle exploit knowing that it is, yeah, here we go. There's a lot of research on this. We can exploit uh, Python pickles, never trust, never unpickle data from sources that you don't trust. This explains it a little bit more, checking out the documentation, uh, and they describe that there. With the library, you can dump and load things. Pickle representation we're going to get back from dumps is all the hex values. And that's probably what we saw when we tried to unravel our original base64 or our fake base64 that was the please subscribe string. So it 
takes the binary representation, all of these bytes here, and then might unserialize it or deserialize it, right, given dumps or loads the functions. But we could take advantage of that because maybe we could use some specific dunder functions or magic functions inside of, of Python, right? If we were to implement something like reduce or underscore, underscore, reduce, underscore, uh, if it's that is going to end up being an object that will, that is going to be used by pickle, then we give it something to execute and something to actually run and do. So here it looks like they create a vulnerable application. They do this in Flask with the base 64 and, and pickle library. So it looks like it does very, very similar to exactly what we're up against. Then if we were to create an exploit, we'll call our class RCE, let its reduce method return a tuple of callable and tuple arguments as per the mentioned docs. Okay. Um, they use a reverse shell. Could we get a reverse shell nice and easily? I don't know if we have bash or like a command that we can run, but we might as well try it. Let's steal, let's steal, <laughs> let's do a little uh, hippity hoppity. Your code is now my property. Let's write a little exploit.py script, uh, slap that in here. And where I want this to go, let's see if we could actually get a callback. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and create, do I have a, a second terminal page open? I do. Hello? Okay, there we go. Um, let's go ahead and do a netcat tech LNVP quad nine, and I will use ngrok to go ahead and serve that up here. Uh, let's use ngrok TCP quad nine, as I did. There we go. Uh, looks like that is gonna be hosting here on that port. So let's modify this code, maybe and if netcat is available on the box, if sh is on the box, if it's writable, where we can put things in the temporary directory, we just don't know. Uh, but let's see if this will execute and run for us. If I hit control B to run this in sublime text, looks like I have this base 64 encoded data. Okay. Uh, so let's try to now go paste this in uh, into this web application and submit it and see if I get a callback, no seemingly an error message. Okay. Are there OS things that I could display back out? Or can I, what could this do? What could I have it run and execute? Return OS system on that output. OS system will return the pro, um, return code but I wanna be able to like check output. How about that? Can I check output given like a who am I? Will that work? What is the error message that you're whining about? OS module has no attribute check output. Uh, I guess that's sub process, isn't it? Can I, can I do sub process? Is it gonna yell at me? No, it, it made a string there. Okay, so let's try that. And let's see if it will display that out. Who am I gives me a value of user. Ooh, with new line character. Okay, okay. So let's try and make this run new code. Let's do an ls command. Uh, we'll generate that. Actually, let me turn off build view, which is a, the plugin that I'm using in Sublime Text to be able to throw that into a new tab. I don't need that. I just want to be able to use this. Uh, and we'll slap that in. Ooh. Here is our app, here is our flag, here's our unicorn config, requirements.txt, a lot of good stuff in there. Okay, so we, we can see the flag is in the current directory. So let's go ahead and run check output, giving us a command to run called just simply cat flag. Now to render that out, here is that base64 payload. And if we were to slap this in, no such file or directory cat flag. Oh, because the command should come first and then the arguments, right? Can I, how about, how about I just use cat comma flag and then rather than passing it as a tuple there, let's just use that, yeah? That way it already is a tuple. I'm gonna submit this. Buff size must be an integer? What are you talking about? Uh. That should be 
I guess, either a list then. Like, you're passing in arguments to check output here when you try to return with this methodology in the reduce dunder function. But CMD is going to end up being the first argument to the check output call. Uh, the first argument can either be a string or a list. If it is a string, then it will be interpreted as a literal command. But if it is a list or a tuple or some other iterable, then the first index will be the command that you run and the others will be the arguments that we're passing. So let's try to use that syntax. I hit control B yet again, paste this in. There we go. There is our flag here. And that is how we could take advantage of the Python pickle module. Uh, super simple in a quick and easy way. Literally just slapping in an object uh, with a magic, quote unquote, magic function or one that will be able to be executing code or doing things when they know that they are referenced. Um, that is one thing that you typically see in other deserialization attacks, whether it's PHP, whether it's Java, whether it's .NET things, etc. So let's go ahead and create just a simple flag.txt for this. And that challenge can be completed. We could write a formal like get flag script if we really wanted to, or you could send that payload, but I don't think that we need to. I think we can call this done. Sweet. Thank you so, so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that one. A little bit all over the place, a little bit of a tiptoe tap dancing, trying to debug and figure, oh, what's going wrong with our code? But we knew that maybe this is going to end up being a Python pickle attack just by examining and understanding the error messages. So props on that one. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Please do those YouTube algorithm things if you'd like. Maybe like the video, leave a comment, subscribe. You know I'd be super duper grateful. So uh, thanks again for watching. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. With the